Occasionally, you may need to make a general journal entry. Keep in mind QuickBooks prefers to work through forms such as expense forms, invoice forms, write checks forms, sales receipts forms. So most of the transactions you will do will be through creating forms, but occasionally you may need to create a journal entry, such as after the end of the year and your accountant has filed your tax return and your accountant says you need to make a journal entry to accumulated depreciation and depreciation expense, or your accountant may have other adjusting entries that they have not made for you, but will give you a list of journal entries you need to make. QuickBooks is designed for you not to use journal entries unless you are instructed to. If your CPA does suggest to you to make the journal entries, be sure to ask your CPA for a list of which accounts should be debited and which accounts should be credited. To make a journal entry, we can go to the plus new and choose journal entry. With this form on the screen, we will date the entry and then choose the first account that we are going to debit. In this case, I'm going to choose depreciation and let's say I'm debiting that $600 and then I have to choose a second line. I cannot save a journal entry with only one line. There has to be something that credits. This ha you have to have equal debits and equal credits when you're making a journal entry. So if he tells me depreciation expense, generally the offset account is accumulated depreciation. Since this QuickBooks does not have this, I'm going to add it. An accumulated depreciation is an asset account and here you can see we have some accumulated amortization of other assets and I'm calling it accumulated depreciation because generally that's what your CPA will call that. And now QuickBooks automatically assumed that I wanted $600 there. Sometimes your CPA may give you a long list of journal entries and he may give you several things that will be debits and then several other things that will be credits and it may not be the exact amount but in the end the totals of the debits and the credits have to be equal. If you're trying to write off something to accounts receivable QuickBooks will require a name in this field. You will not be able to save a transaction that you have chosen accounts receivable for without a name in this field. Same thing with accounts payable. If you're choosing to make a journal entry to accounts payable, QuickBooks is going to require a name here. So basically QuickBooks wants to know if you're making an adjustment to accounts receivable, which customer is going to owe or not owe you money any longer. Same with accounts payable. If you choose accounts payable, QuickBooks wants to know which vendor are you going to owe more or owe less to. So you have to put a name on those transactions. And that's how we create journal entries.